Okay. Welcome to morning prayer at St. Peter's Casa Grande. This is Sunday, August the 9th, 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Our service begins on page 78 of your Book of Common Prayer. Our service bulletin is available online. Although we follow the Book of Common Prayer, such, some items such as the Confession and the Prayers of the People are forms different sources and are included in the inline, online bulletin. I'm Patricia Dennis, your lector today with my husband, David. Reverend Jeannie Rasmussen is our assisting priest. Father Dave Rickert is our celebrant. Gladie Hernet, our music director, will open today's service with the prelude, The Gift of Love. Our collect today, grant to us, Lord, we pray the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Opening hymn is hymn 410. I will play an introduction and then do verse 1 and 2. Hymn 410. what our Lord Jesus Christ tells us. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart 
and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Creator, to give praise, to hear God's holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me with the Jubilate on page 82. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He made himself, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 105. We will read by the half verse. I give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. And speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Of offspring of Abraham, his servant. O children of Jacob, his chosen. Then he called for a famine in the land. And destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them. Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters. His neck they put in an iron collar. Until his prediction came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He set him as a master over his household. As a ruler over all his possessions. To instruct his princes according to his will. And to teach his elders wisdom. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, 
was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bela and Zelpa, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was a son of his old age, and had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when the brothers saw that their father loved him more than all the, the other brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. Now his brothers went to the pasture of their, their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron. He came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where are they pasturing the flock? The man said, They have gone away, for I have heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went with, after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes his dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into the, one of the pits. Then we shall say a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life, Reuben said to them. Shed no blood. Throw him into the pit where his wilderness, but lay no hands on him. He might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came back, came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe and a long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty and there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, with their camels carrying balm, gum, and raisin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some mid midnight traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Here ends the lesson. Please join me with a song of creation for the earth and its creatures found on page 88. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the earth glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O mountains and hills, and all that grows upon the earth. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O springs of water, seas and streams, O whales and all that move in the waters. All birds of the air glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O beasts of the wild, and all you flocks and herds. O men and women everywhere, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the letter of Paul to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? 
This is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But who does it say? The word is near you on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will put him to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Here ends the lesson. Let us respond with Canticle 20, found on page 94. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Gladdy, you'll need to turn on your microphone. Our gradual hymn is hymn 707. We will sing verse 1 before the gospel and verse 2 after the gospel. Hymn 707. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, 
why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus begins our gospel passage today by sending the disciples ahead in the boat and telling the crowd to go on their way. Just like in last week's gospel, Jesus removes himself from the work of miracles and teaching. Our Savior recharges by praying alone on the mountain. The last time Jesus tried to get away, he was followed by a crowd in need of healing. His disciples, when confronted by 5,000 hungry families, fell apart and just didn't know what to do. How could our Savior think that we could live this life without him by our side at all times? Because the human condition is a challenge. We have complicated relationships with each other and our physical world. Even if our bodies remain static and we never aged, our lives would still be very complex. But we are mammals finite creatures with short lifespans compared to the physical world around us. Genesis 3.19 tells us, and we hear, by the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. You are dust, and to dust you shall return. The ancient peoples knew their science when they told this creation story. Turns out about 99% of our bodies are made of only six basic elements. Carbon, nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, hydrogen, and oxygen. Those last two elements, hydrogen and oxygen, play a huge part in our bodies. We are mostly water. Our brain and heart are almost three quarters water and our lungs are over 80% water. With that kind of biology, the disciples should have been comfortable in any kind of sea. As a fisherman who lived most of his life in the Sea of Galilee, Peter must have known how to at least keep his head above water. Even if he was freaked out over Jesus walking towards him, it really doesn't make sense that he would have needed Jesus to keep him from going under. Today's gospel does not make sense. Walking on water is not possible for any of us, but somehow it is easy for Jesus. Perhaps that's because our Savior gets strength and power from something beyond dust. As Jesus pulls Peter up out of the water, he doesn't tell him to go get some swimming lessons. Jesus wonders why Peter doubts. Where's Peter's faith? Why does Peter, when he accepts the invitation by Jesus, somehow have the ability to walk on water for a while, but when confronted by the strong winds, suddenly start sinking? 
Doesn't Peter remember all the teachings of Jesus? Doesn't Peter remember all those miracles? It seems that strong winds easily overtake our patron saint. That's something we can all identify in the choppy seas of today's world. With so many challenges, I have joined Peter in having that sinking feeling. Maybe you have too. Our footing feels so unstable today and our future has the potential to be as unsettling as any rough water. We need a lifeline. Do not be afraid, take heart. We have Jesus. Even though we are but dust, we each contain exactly what Jesus is completely made of. We each contain are made in the image of God. That means just like Jesus, each of us is fashioned to withstand anything life can throw at us. It is true that humans can experience painful life-shattering events, yet many times come out richer, even stronger in their faith. Richer, even stronger in their connection with their creator. Instead of being worried about the strong winds, Peter may have been able to take a few more steps if he had kept his eye on Jesus. If we keep our eyes on Jesus, especially his actions, we will become stronger in our faith, able to withstand anything life throws at us. Today's gospel begins with Jesus showing us how we can always reconnect with God, recharge our faith to align with our Creator's love. Alone. Alone is crazy to preach to a community that understands themselves as a body. It is crazy to preach being alone to people who are inspired when they worship with others. It is crazy to preach being alone when we are energized, when we pray for and work to love all our neighbors. Jesus, after teaching, healing, feeding and worshiping God with others, goes to the mountain to pray alone. He sends everyone else away. We have all experienced those moments where God fully inhabits us. Those times where we just cannot describe with words. We do have faith because we've experienced something beyond those six basic elements from which we're mostly made. Our faith began when we received the life-giving, indescribable presence, real presence of God. Love. Love is certainly not physical, but it can move us more than the strongest wind, the most turbulent sea. Love can't be purchased at a drugstore, but it does heal the biggest, deepest wounds in our lives. God's love is always, always around us. God's love is always within us. But sometimes we can sink when we have doubts. Sometimes we can sink when we turn and focus on the turbulence in our world. If we choose to, we can fill our days with very bad news. Images sounds, and stories of tragedy, conflict, abuse of power, and fear are easily accessed with the push of a button. But all these turbulent winds can turn us away from God's love, the creative force that we've been fashioned to reflect. Fortunately, Jesus shows us today how to recharge, reconnect with our true nature alone. 
we can renew our faith by turning off all the distracting, fearful winds and sit in silence with our loving God. Just like Jesus on the mountain, time spent in silent prayer, silent contemplation of who we really are and how we are made in the perfect image of God's love will recharge us to withstand any challenge in our lives. Restorative prayer with God's always restore, renews our faith, always fills us with God's love. For love is what we are truly, truly made of. Amen. Let us now join together with the Apostles' Creed found on page 53. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let us lift our voices in prayer to Almighty God. The prayers of the people are found on page 387. Creator God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jennifer, our bishop, Dave and Jeannie, our priests and all deacons. May they be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We acknowledge the traditional peoples of the land on which we stand, especially the ancient people of the Hohokam and Pima and the ancestors of the Odaham, Akchen, and Gila River peoples. We honor and pray for our indigenous neighbors. That we may dwell together in respectful harmony. We pray for all who govern, especially Donald, our president, Doug, our governor, and all those who hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray for our servicemen and women at home and abroad. May there be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. May our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for those whose lives are impacted by incarceration. We pray for those suffering due to the forces of natural disasters and violence in our world. We pray for all people affected by migration. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Father, we pray for strength in this pandemic. Bring all those who have died into your embrace. Comfort their friends and families and communities. Give compassion and strength to medical staff, family, or friends who care for those who are ill. Unite all nations, all minds, to eradicate this threat. 
and creator, your beautifully made children in all colors are struggling today. Guide your people to manifest your love in the world, full of peace and standing with the marginalized, just like your son, Jesus did when he, was, when he walked here among us. And Father, we pray for healing of body, mind and spirit for Ron and Doug, Charlotte, Mike, Teresa, Patrick, Vera, Louie, John, Ronnie, Jake, Nancy, Gladdy, Sherry, Daryl, Reverend Jeannie, Bryson, Tina and Vivian, Kara and Jim, Ava and Abner, and Rudy. We pray for the repose of the soul of Mark. We pray for all caregivers, bring them courage, patience, and opportunities for rest. And loving creator, we offer our thanksgivings for all the blessings of this life, especially the joy in your people of St. Peter's. Grant that through our prayers, our lives may radiate the presence of the Christ to all who dwell on earth, for Jesus is our savior forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for Peace is found on page 99. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for mission found on page 100. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon the flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our recessional hymn is hymn 398. We will sing the first two verses, hymn 398. thanksgiving almighty god father of all mercies we are unworthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made we bless you for our creation preservation and all the blessings of this life but above all 
for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercy that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And may the blessing of our loving Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, dwell within you this day and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Have faith, do not doubt. Go into the world rejoicing in the name of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Please visit our website, www stpetersepiscopal.org to learn more about our community. We look forward to gathering with you again.